Alright guys, such to back again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far after the subline has divorced to got confirmed a couple of days ago now. Crim6 is revealing some pretty significant information about how exactly the transaction went down between the Dallas Empire and the subliners, but also where exactly he thinks he stands among the best players of all time. I'm sure you guys could guess the answer to that one, but very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. Like if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe if you are new as always, I would greatly appreciate it. Really upset the channel, thank you very much indeed for that. I thought this was kind of funny early on. Not exactly sure when this was from, but this is I mean, close to clearly back in the day sometime, but um, maybe, I don't know, UMG fully 2014, could be 2016 well, onwards. Tough to say. Close to kind of look the same throughout a number of these years. Tough to say whether this is Black Ops 3 Close or even earlier than that, to be honest. But speaking of New York, Diamond Con, of course, was on their team last year. Will be starting the season in challenges, he says, for Vanguard. Team announcement coming very soon, indeed. Of course, um, there was a fair bit of talk, right? The fact that when Clayster did come back into New York, did he kind of screw over Diamond Con in that sense? Like, to be fair, Con got a fair opportunity this season to prove what he could do, and certainly going forward he's going to have some good vouching opportunities by some of the guys on that squad and also like I'm sure a spot is going to be around the corner somewhere or another because Diamond was pretty solid this year but um, at the same time just didn't quite work out to get another spot in the pro league it's going to be tough to do that always but um yeah maybe when expansion comes in it's tough to say but of course uh, some of these guys are going to be pretty dominant in challenges but also you've got to think about which of these guys might potentially get picked up as a substitute player because I'm um, pretty much none of the teams right now are going to do that yet they're going to wait until the game comes out see who's like dominating these early tournaments and then decide who they want their sub to be. Or maybe they even think about making a change before they even actually start playing the season, right? That's kind of Florida did last year with a Neptune coming in for um, it was like a Havoc at the time, but then Havoc came in for Sacked in the middle of the season. But as uh, Hamza says, heading into the Vanguard Challenges with Zapsius Fire and Jinjways. So that's the roster they're going to be fielding, but um, well, we kind of looked at this yesterday. Now they seemingly have a team of four. So yeah, certainly some guys that should be at the top of the table somewhere or another. This also I thought was interesting and kind of disappointing really from Joey Nubsy. I'd like to announce I'll be stepping away from coaching had an amazing past few years been so thankful to meet the people and, the pl and see the places that I have in and out of game it's been a rough two years time to focus on something new so of course Nubsy having co coached the Gen G squad to pretty good success during Black Ops 4 but had a difficult result top 32 at the World Championship then the last couple of years on Seattle it's kind of disappointing because of course like, Joey Nubsy didn't get the best out of those players on Seattle but then again maybe the team was just completely chalked you could look at it from that angle kind of a shame I think not to see um, Joey get another spot somewhere because it would be nice to see like what he can do with a different set of players players like kind of get decent results out of them because um obviously it was a tough time on Seattle the last couple of years but understandably really that the stock of some of those guys not just the coach but the players pretty much in the bin so tough to say but um, I mean maybe expansion comes through it's tough really for Joey like maybe he goes through challenges and tries to grind through that but it's just tough to, to get a spot back in the league doing stuff like that when um well when success is by no means guaranteed and maybe you kind of a crazy amount of impact if you're doing things online I do think this is also interesting from Nubsy it appears Sam that being Octane has successfully squad wiped the entire original Seattle team. What a path of destruction out of him. So pretty much the um the well the original Seattle squad that was going into Call of Duty Modern Warfare right 2019 when it was um you had Apathy who's now retired, you had Enable who's now retired, you had Karma who's now retired, you had a Slack who's now I guess in Changes, but um you know I, I guess not in the Pro League anymore. And then Joey Nubsy was the coach who's now disappeared as well. Even their general manager is gone. So Octane's pretty much the only guy left standing from that original Seattle squad. And um I mean yeah what, what a travesty of a couple of years it's been for them. Hopefully for Seattle it gets a lot better in the next couple of years and um, also for where Octane's going to be going as well also talking of Seattle this from Pred off-season vibes this guy getting ready to go I feel like they need to get Pred a Pred, uh, Doug Center Martin sleeveless jersey or something when this guy gets to the States and um, you know, Accuracy was kind of talking on the Breaker Boy podcast and this guy's like he's a confident guy he's not afraid to let someone like have it across the main stage that was at least like Accuracy's feeling on the guy that like if this guy pops a three-piece he's going to stand up and start shouting right so you know I, I want to see um, I want to see this guy in full force right get the sleeves off all that type of good stuff. Hopefully Seattle could accommodate. But I didn't think this was kind of funny from accuracy in the reply. Of course, going to be the IGL of this squad. You better be hitting the rotations as hard as you are hitting the bench press. Definitely try to get these guys in line early on, right? Because accuracy is pretty much tasked now on this roster with, um, you know, not just being the IGL, but also like the, the main AR for the team, but also kind of like coaching these guys because Pred, Mack and, and Siv, they're certainly going to need some coaching. Of course, they've got a coach over there as well, right? In Phoenix, who's coming into the squad. But um, I'm sure accuracy is going to have a big role to play in that 
as well, uh, keeping these guys in check. But um, yeah, the talent of Pred is undeniable, and I'm well, I'm looking forward to seeing how things do progress. Let's talk about this then from Crimson. So a very interesting article comes out in the Dallas Morning News. I wanted to mention this really just because the fact that this might be the last time we see Crimson talked about in the Dallas News. Sean Collins does a great job really covering that well the Dallas Empire the last couple of years over there. But of course, Crim is now not going to be on that roster anymore, going to New York. So um, well anyway, they spoke with with Crim Six. They spoke with Hastro over at Envy to kind of figure out exactly how this thing went down, how Crim Six ended up moving to New York, and um, kind of his perspective on the new squad that they're going for. So of course, uh, look, Crim Six is very excited about this new team. Definitely uh, looking to be the best version of himself, which he well fairly admits he was not last year. But also looking at how this transaction went down. So if you guys want to check out the entire article, I'll, I'll leave it linked for you guys down below. But um, well, I'll take a few snippets here to dive into. Firstly, I thought this was kind of funny with them, um, well, talking about the salary that, well, the Crim6 commands. Not just the salary, but also the buyout, which apparently is a pretty big deal. So, of course, like, the last year with Dallas was not particularly good. Like, um, to be fair, like, they didn't have bad results at all. They came second at a couple of the majors, top three. I mean, they were kind of in and around that ballpark, despite the fact that the team really didn't seem to be working particularly well. And, um, yeah, this is interesting what Crim says. I had orgs asking me, why would we get you when we can get a full team for the same money that it's going to cost you, right? Because that's the thing, like, Crim says, I think he's talked about this on stream a couple of times recently, that instead of paying him, like, the salary that he wants and all this type of stuff, you could just get an entire team for that, right, on the minimum salaries or whatever the case may be, or even slightly above the minimum. I think he was talking that this was um, kind of the case with, for example, um, the Los Angeles Grillers. Not exactly sure what they ended up doing, but I'm pretty sure Crimson said that maybe he was in discussions with them and, like, you know, for example, they wanted to choose methods over him because I guess they could get him for cheaper. The 37-time major winner and three-time world champ was baffled because that team is going to be, well, you know, I wonder what he says here, referencing a synonym for manure if, um, well, if you decide to get a full team as opposed to getting Crimson on his own. Continues with the following, it's not hard to connect the dots as to why Porter wants to play for New York, of course with Claystro over there and um, the success they have had together. Two veterans of the esports, but the Eubanks alone wasn't enough for Porter to play for the Sunliners. That's saying a lot, considering he didn't know if he would find a team at all. Not bragging or anything, but I'm the best Call of Duty player there has ever been. I've literally transformed teams. I bring more to the table than any individual player. I can make any team good. I can make a good team great. I mean, this is quite the same, right? This is um, Crimson in a nutshell right here. But to be fair, he may well be bang on the money. We'll have a look at that in a second. But nobody wanted to buy me or put that number up. To me, it felt like a slap in the face. So seems like uh, the number, whatever the number was that Dallas Empire wanted for Crim, no one was really willing to give it, even even for a guy like Crimson, right? To you know, all the success he has had. But maybe some organizations not too willing to even give Crimson a go, given that amount of money. So in the end, like, um, well, Porter took a serious ownership of his own shortcomings. He didn't have fun on Call of Duty Black Ops Car War. It was his least favorite COD he'd ever competed in. I definitely made it miserable for my teammates because I wasn't having fun playing, I will admit. I felt like I needed a team. It was my team versus the world. Clay went to the subliners, then we barely texted each other or even hung out at all. I needed a group around me willing to go to battle. He didn't really feel like he had maybe last year on the Dallas Empire. And um, as he says, I think it'd be delusion to say anything over three years left of my career. I just have so much fun doing this. I'm almost twice the age of some of these newcomers. And this is the bit that I was meaning to touch on, but for some reason brushed over. Though Porter said Raphael, that being Hastro, had to lower the asking price, right? So basically he had to lower the, uh, lower the amount of money that these teams actually were well, trying to get for Crim6, that of course being the Dallas Empire. Let's collect some souls this year, says Crim. So to be fair, I think that Crim6, like during the entirety of his period, just that statement where he says like he's the best individual, he's the most impactful individual player of all time. I think um, you can certainly, I mean, look at this, L like these number ones are just absurd. Throughout uh, Black Ops 2, Ghost, then into Advanced Warfare as well. And of course, this isn't, doesn't even include like the latter two years of the Dynasty period where he won the World Championship in, um, in Infinite Warfare, of course, on that Optic team, winning a load of events that season and also throughout the Black Ops 3 season as well. But this was kind of the dominant period. And um, you know, for those newer fans, really, like Crimson was considered, in Ghost to a time, he was considered the best player in the game, no doubt about it. And um, even in like the Jetpack era, I think a lot of Optic fans would have said at the time he was like comfortably a top 10 player in the game, but also, of course, adds a lot more to the team than just, um, well, just individual performances. Like, um, there's no secret that really that Optic team was scarier because Crimson was there. Like, um, teams did not want to face up against Crimson. The mindset that he brings to the team, like that, that what he instills in his teammates is um is different to what a load of other players bring to the table. So I certainly understand what he means here. And the fact of the matter is that last year, like um Dallas Empire would consistently get outslayed all across the park, and Crimson individually was not a very solid player, at least um statistically, as I say. But um still, the team still got much better results than 90% of the teams in the entire league. That's what Crimson does, and um, I think that if he actually is putting up numbers and he is enjoying the game, as he says, and he is on a team that he um well that he likes, and he was also talking in that article the fact that like um he wanted to make sure this team did not just have one good SMG in Hydra, but they had two, and 
And then when they got Neptune signed from Florida, then Crimson was like, okay, I'm happy with this team. Let's give it a go. I rated Neptune what it was able to do for the Mutineers last year, despite the bit of drama they had about auto sprint right at the start of the title. But um, yeah, that's the thing. Is Crimson right about this statement? As we'll go back and look at it right here. Like, um, I bring more to the table than any individual player. It's quite the statement given the talent that does exist in the league. But I think when you do look at his tenure, when you look at his record, what he's achieved throughout so many different organizations over so many different years, I think um, you do maybe have to tip it to Crimson. Whether he can keep doing it right there, because that is the question. What's the longevity here? How many more years can Crimson still be the most impactful player in the entire world? As he says, you know, anything over three years might be somewhat delusional. Of course, we talked about salary caps a few days ago, right? And the possibility of them being completely out the window. So um, yeah, maybe like Crimson was actually asking for a fair bit of change. But um, I mean, still, we don't know what New York actually did to that. But still, glad to see Crimson, of course, in the league on a team that he wants to be on. And hopefully he will enjoy. This also from Zoom, like I thought it was a kind of cool like, little clip that came out right here for playing football back in the day. Soccer for that for those in the US of A. And as you can see at the start, you've got FaZe Tomas Perlo Paparato, right? Okay, you know, who knows, right? Is he going to FaZe? I suppose that does all remain to be seen. And well, just to finish things off with as well, after we see a nice couple of highlights from Zuma, but um, well, the Esports Awards is coming up relatively soon. It's nearly November now. And usually it's November sometime where the Esports Awards start coming through and we get the, um, well, the, the official ceremony. I don't know if they're going to do the ceremony in the traditional way. They would do it when everyone goes and have like a nice, um, effectively like party. They all dress up. They go all around their tables and it's nice stuff like this but uh, still these are the nominees from the well the Call of Duty side have got nameless chance Miles Cami. Atlanta faces the organization of the team of the year. Three controller rookies in Stanley, Insight and Hydra. Abizi and Simba's players of the year. Marky B and Crowder as coach of the year as well. This is of course the link to vote. I'll leave it linked down below but very much intrigued to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it I'd greatly appreciate a like on the video. Really upset that YouTube are going to know you enjoy this content. I'd be like you may enjoy this content as well and I'd grow the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank as always, take care, and I will see you next time. Dude, Clay, you kind of remind me of Parasite sometimes. What? How am I not right in this situation? Oh, he's, so, he's clapping his hands, dude. <laughs> See, that's because that's, that's what I was going for, dude. Because last time he got so mad when I said that. I was just trying to <laughs> with him. <laughs>